for problem number seven, we're, we're going to just follow the directions here. I'll assume that you know how to type in the function. So if you don't know how to do that, please see me immediately. And then we want to identify the window as negative 5 to 5. So we're going to let our x min be negative 5. That's our domain that we're looking at. And uh, x max is 5. We're not sure how high or low it gets, but I was in a different window here before. So we're going to start with negative 10 to 10 and I, again I don't know if this is going to work oh, that, perfect so we've got we know I should show you this too we know that since it's a degree of 4 so the degree is 4 we um, we know that degrees of 4 either open up or open down we also should remember that if the degree is 4 of the polynomial that it, at most it would have three bumps and that's a really important thing to understand too because when you look at the screen of the calculator you notice this already has three bumps and we know it cannot come back down so we know that the current window that we're looking at contains the most important parts of the graph because just the as x gets bigger in the negative direction the y values are just going to keep getting bigger so we can see the key characteristics of this function right here in the window that we chose so we don't have to we don't have to bother trying to extend our window to see if the graph does anything fancy any, anywhere later on outside of the current window. So that's really important to understand uh, because you can save yourself a lot of time. So here we have negative 5 to 5. We're supposed to identify any local and absolute mins and maxes. Well, hopefully it's clear to you that there are no, there's no absolute max because the graph will look like this and it'll keep going forever and in, in, uh, up, forever up and so there's no absolute max but the absolute min, let's find that first and so if we, we second trace okay so I pushed a button here, let me get out of this and then I'll go back to the graph second trace for calculate, we want to calculate the minimum value so we could scroll down to a 3 or just and hit enter or just type a 3 and we want to surround that minimum value so we want to mark our left side of that let the, move the cursor to the left hand side of the minimum value there so we can see the minimums right down here so we're going to mark that by hitting enter and then we're going to move the cursor over to the right we could move it all the way over here and we're only going to have one minimum but if we move it way over here, then we can see there's two minimums in between the left-hand uh, marker and then this cursor right here. So we don't want to move it all the way over there. We want to keep the cursor kind of in a small neighborhood so it surrounds that minimum value in a small neighborhood. There's our neighborhood. And then we're going to move the cursor anywhere in between the two lines, the two vertical lines. And we're going to guess at our minimum. So you, in other words, you don't want to just move the cursor there and write that number down. That's, that's a big mistake because the calculator can only get you so close but uh, by hand. But if we hit enter and guess, it'll tell us the minimum. So the minimum coordinates are here, the x and the y coordinates. And it's asking us to uh, approximate any local and absolute extrema. So the absolute min of, we'll round to the nearest uh, three digits after the decimal, negative 6.124 at x equals negative 0.569. Negative 0.569. That's how we do that. And then we can see we have a local max right up here at about, I don't know, 1.2 and then what is that, 5 or 6, something like that. So we do second calculate again. But this time we're looking for the value of the maximum, the, uh, that one right there. We could type a 4 or we could just hit uh, scroll down to 4 and hit enter. Once we do that, we're again, we have to surround the, the high point there, put a left boundary on it, mark that by hitting enter, move the cursor to the right, hit enter again to mark the right boundary. And then we move the cursor anywhere up towards the top or anywhere actually in between the two, cur uh, two vertical lines and I could even leave it there, it'll still move that cursor right up to the maximum value. So we have a local max, local max, I'm just going to, instead of writing all that, I'm just going to write a local max at uh, 
1.319 comma 5.643 5.643 and then finally we have a local min over there and we're going to find that by uh, second calculate or second trace that it accesses the calculate I'm going to type in 3 I'm just going to push a 3 and it's going to find no, it tells you right up here by the way what it's going to do so maybe you made a mistake oh did I hit the right button yeah it says calculate minimum so we're going to keep the cursor somewhere to the left of that minimum and move the cursor for the right bound to the right of it and then get that cursor in between the two lines and we see we have 2.99999 oh, so a lot of nines there if we round that to the nearest three digits after the decimal then we keep increasing those nines and we have a local min that has an x value of three and a y value of negative three. So there you have it.